Hello, it's B. Atwell here. And um, being a Friday, I thought, well, you know, if I'm going to be sitting here, I might as well tell a story. So this one, um, I wrote quite a while ago, and it's called Tangled Toad Todd and His Trip Proof Trainers. Shall I say that again? Why not? Tangled Toad Todd and His Trip Proof Trainers. Well, first of all, Todd was a very small boy. Probably the smallest boy that ever lived. He was very, very difficult to see because he was that tiny. He lived all on his own. By the way, he lived so long ago that there were no houses, there were no cities, there were no roads, and there were no grown-ups. He lived in a small log cabin that had one window that overlooked a stream that ran uphill and two doors, one to the left of the building and one to the right, which were always wide open. He lived there with two pelicans. Incidentally, the reason why he was called Tangle Toad Todd was because he used to trip over absolutely everything. His ankles, his laces, it's even said that he once tripped over his own shadow. Well, anyway, one day, one of the pelicans, because there was a really, really fat one and a really, really skinny one, but one day the skinny one came over and he said to him, Todd, look out of the window. Do you see the magical stream? He says, magical? The pelican said, yes. Didn't you notice that instead of it running downhill, it runs uphill. It's the only stream that runs uphill. He goes, oh, and I didn't realise that. She said, yes. If you follow that stream, it will take you to a place where there are the most magnificent pure chocolate trees that go up for miles. And on them, you will find 22 carat pure gold leaves. Beyond that are the magical frogs who wear turbans, kilt and laden hosen and make the strangest incantations that you've ever heard. Beyond that, you'll have to get past the butterflies who paint crystalline arches which look like rainbows. But if you touch them, they'll shatter. And if that happens, the butterflies will get very, very angry. Beyond that, the stream becomes shallow and eventually it runs into a cave that's inside of a boulder. After following a slightly mossy path, you eventually come to a little wall and on the top of that wall there is a little gold ring and if you put your finger in that ring and make a wish, no matter what it is, it comes true. Well, Todd wasn't the kind of boy to waste any time. He grabbed his ankles and he ran and jumped straight into the stream. It coursed and it swirled and it, it swooshed and it took him under and then he came above it and eventually he could smell the sweetest smell of chocolate that he smelled in the entirety of his life. What a beautiful smell, he thought. And then he saw them, the magnificent chocolate trees that went up for miles. His mouth was watering, and then all of a sudden, thud, splash. He could see the 22 karat gold leaves hitting the water and exploding almost as they landed. He scrambled back through the water, got a bit further down, and all of a sudden he could hear the strangest incantation that you have ever heard. He wiped the water from his eyes and he could see frogs in turbans, wearing kilts and laden hosen, with gongs and triangles and cymbals and tambourines, making the strangest music that you'd ever heard. As he got closer, they spotted him. Plop, plippity, plop, 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 splash. They jumped off the lilies and swam for their lives. He drifted a bit further along, and eventually the water was so shallow that he could get up and walk, so he stood up and started to walk. As he started to walk, true to nature, he tripped over and he reached out and he grabbed onto a crystalline rainbow, an arch made of crystals, and it shattered. As soon as this happened, he saw the angriest looking butterfly that he'd ever seen in his life flapping towards him, making the strangest sound. He started to run away from it and he ducked under all of the other arches until eventually he was out of breath and he found himself inside of a cave, inside of a boulder. He realised that he'd found himself most of the way there. He started to proceed to walk along the mossy path. It was a bit echoey for each footstep, but he was brave and he kept on going. Eventually he came to the wall. Got to the wall 
and you can see the water running up the wall instead of down it. Just a thin thread, mind. And at the very top, there it was. A golden ring. Ha ha ha. Well, he got on tippy toe and he inserted his finger into the ring. And as he placed that digit in that ring, there was a jingle, a tingle, and a rather disconcerting pop. And there it was. A bright red box with a bright red satin ribbon on it and it had a tag on the side of it and the tag read to make these trainers do their trick make your movements fast and quick make laziness take second place let haste be your only pace he laughed and he, he held his stomach and he rolled on the floor and, and he had stitches in his side and he, he laughed a little bit more and eventually when he collected himself he reached up and he grabbed the box and as by magic the bow undid itself and there they were a pair of trip proof trainers well he put his feet inside of them took a breath and the laces did themselves up he stood up felt a bit strange as he first took his balance and then he looked at the opening of the cave and he ran out of the cave, smashing all of the other rainbows, straight past all of the frogs, plop, 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 they swam for their lives, straight past all of the chocolate trees, all of the golden leaves, into one door of the log cabin, straight out of the other door. Todd, Todd, cried one of the pelicans. He turned his head, tripped over his ankle, the trainers came off, got washed up the stream, she flapped down gently beside him and said, Todd, sweet Todd, you have to learn to walk before you can run.